Hello, BookTube. I've got another starter kit for you today, and it's a starter kit I have received requests for many, many times long before there was a BookTube. <laughs> and I've received quite a few re requests since there's been a BookTube. Uh, in these starter kits, I like to give you a few suggestions of books that you could consider on a particular subject, particular heading, particular period. Uh, and when it comes to those subjects and those periods and those headings, usually history is the foremost you know, broader category that people bring up. And quite a few times, there is just a type of reader who wants to an overview. Before they get specific, they want an overview. There's just a type of reader that feels that way. Maybe you are that type of reader. And I always suggest to those people, I always make the suggestion that what you really ought to do is noodle around on Wikipedia type in the world in Wikipedia, get it, uh, go to the history section, follow up on the hot links, read all around that subject. But a lot of people want books. They want, they want, I have lost track of how many times I have received a request. What's a good history of the world? So that's what your starter kit is today. It's a world history starter kit. And when we're talking world history, uh, we really are talking about two separate things. It's, it's, they are made into one thing by the egotism of the human race, but we're, we're talking about two separate things, the history of the earth and the history of humanity, <laughs> which is, those are two things that are not the same. <laughs> earth was lifeless for well over a billion years, for over a billion years, a billion years. It was home to only single-celled organisms. Microscopic scum and slime and whatnot. And for, for billions of years after that, invertebrates, simple vertebrates, no land-dwelling creatures, it's only the tiniest sliver of a fraction of time that humanity has been around. But when you people ask for a really good history of the world, they could mean either one of those two things, even though those two things are not at all the same. So I want to start off this starter kit with a couple of suggestions for the first kind, the history of the world. <laughs> we'll start with Robert Hazen's book, The Story of Earth. Uh, with a bright cover, so it might be a little washed out here, but I do recommend this. It's very well done. Uh, it's it's the, the latest scientific gleaning, so the longer away from it its publication date is, the more dodgy it might be on the fine details, but the broader details are well known, as you can see from the cover here, right where the bottom is our beautiful bright planet, and the top is a molten mass, <laughs> an unlivable world. Uh, which Earth was unlivable to human beings for quite a bit of its history. Uh, if you can find a copy of this book, it's well worth your time. And this next one, I know you can find a copy of it because it's relatively new. And it is amazingly good. Its perspective, its long-form perspective is amazingly good. This is by Henry G. G. I think we saw it on this channel. It's a very short history of life on Earth. 4.6 billion years. Uh, and I thought... If you're going to do this sort of thing, you're going, to, you're going to have to make a trivial job of it. Trivial almost to the point of nonsensical, but no, no. This author manages the broad perspective very, very well. Uh, so I can strongly recommend it. It's probably even not out in paperback yet. Uh, and then uh, this next one, it, we are bridging the gap between the two kinds of history of the world, <laughs> uh, depending on what you're interested in. Uh, this is from the great publisher DK, and also in partnership with the Smithsonian Institute. And this is History of the World Map by Map, which gives away the game a little bit there because humans make maps. And humans have only been around for a tiny fraction of an infinitesimal speck of time on this planet. Uh, but there are quite a few maps in here that weren't made by any human that are theoretical. Uh, and this helps in a couple of ways. Not only is it uh, stoppering down our awareness of this subject from the geophysical to the human, uh, but it also quantifies everything visually, which a lot of these, the books I'm going to recommend to you will do, and which is really helpful. When you're talking about such enormous stretches of time, it really helps to have a big visual overview, and this starts to do that. Uh, uh, this next one isn't of that type. There are no visuals in here. But it has the distinction of all the books on this list of being interactive. It's out of print. You'd have to find a copy. And again, as a, when I tease you with stuff like this, if you need me to try and find a copy for you, I will. 
but it has been a staple in used bookstores for quite some time. It was really popular um, 40, 40 years ago, something like that. It's uh, the timetables of history, and it's a wider, oversized paperback that just has uh, line works, just a, a strata of lines on every page showing you the developments in biology, uh, archaeology, literature, history, warfare, religion, all that sort of thing. Uh, and it moves on straight through time. And the reason why I say it's interactive is because there's a huge amount of white space on those pages. And a huge more, a huge amount more dates that you can add. I once had a copy of this thing. And I remember gradually over the course of reading one history book after another and one biography after another, I jotted in huge amounts of extra notes on particular dates in particular years so that you can customize this yourself which gives a great interactive feeling uh, to reading history and to understanding the sweep of it although here we have largely moved from the first kind of world history to the second kind which is human history uh, then we move uh, we'll go back to DK publisher and also Smithsonian Institution and we'll, we'll go to their best uh, book on the subject. They make oversized books, visual feasts, uh, on different subjects like sea battles or uh, kings or nature or the sea or whatnot. And they do one for history. And it's this third edition, this revised third edition that I think is really the best one. And uh, that can be a bit of a nightmare to, to fend through when it comes to looking for it. So in the description down below for this video, if I remember, I will not only list the books, but I will list the ISBN for this particular edition, and for a couple of others that I give in here that uh, that might otherwise be just lost in a sea of alternate editions. Then this next one is from National Geographic. This is the ultimate visual history of the world. Uh, and it, uh, once again, we see the hubris here. This is not a history of the world. This is a history of humanity, as it says in the subtitle. This, this is not a history of the world, because for a huge amount of time in the world, nothing happened. Nothing human happened. Huge storms, rage, hurricanes, volcanoes, asteroid strikes, but no one around who thought in terms of recording it or of it being an event in history instead of some, just something to live through. Uh, that That's just comparatively very recently, but this is a beautiful thing. Gorgeous. This is just from a couple of years ago, and it's gorgeous and will really help you to put different time periods in perspective. Uh, then we have... Uh, Theoretical writings, we can finish up with uh, with people capturing this in prose. I've shown you a few things that try to capture the history of humanity in images. But you also, a lot of you, quite a few people on BookTube and long before there was a BookTube have requested recommendations for world histories that don't involve pictures, that involve uh, a historian or a team of historians trying to figure it all out. Now, the problem with that is that it's a bound and printed book which means it has to be selective. So selective almost as to be dystopian. How can you do a history of humanity in a thousand words, in a thousand pages? How is that possible? That is not possible. So it helps if you have a theory <laughs> or a particular glint of uh, a lens to look through. And this next one, I, we've seen it on this channel. It's called The Dawn of Everything, A New History of Humanity by David Graeber and David Wengro. Uh, and it's a big thing, and it's extremely enjoyable to read. Uh, a history of humanity from as far back as Paleolithic records will go to the modern era. And it does an incomplete job of covering all of that ground, as any written history would have to do. But it makes up for it, like I said, by filtering it all through the lens of an idea, an ideology. These two authors maintain that statism is, in, is not inevitable. That just because every time human societies aggregate, they form states with power structures and positions of authority and co means of coercion, that just because humankind, human races, human societies do that, and I've always done that, doesn't mean they have to do that. In fact, these authors maintain that plenty of times in, in human history they have not done that. It's absolute nonsense, but it is thrilling to read. I, do, I wouldn't recommend this as your first world history. Uh, any more than I would recommend A People's History of the United States by Howard Zinn as your first United States history. But once you have a history under your belt, I, I wanted to make sure that this was on the list uh, because I loved it 
even though I was infuriated with it the whole time. But then we have uh, Fernand Braudel. This is an English language translation of his History of Civilizations. This is a Penguin classic or a Penguin uh, trade paperback. And Braudel is famous for his history, his books, his gigantic book on the Mediterranean. But this is uh, an old and obviously, when you read it on the page, an old and obviously tired historian just meditating on what patterns the histories of civilizations tend to fulfill. It's no less idiosyncratic than the previous book, The Dawn of Everything, uh, although it, it tries to sound like it is. Uh, tries to sound like it's professorial, but it is any one volume history of civilization has to be idiosyncratic by nature. Uh, this thing is no more than 600 pages long. So it, it is a study in what it's leaving out. Uh, but there's one history of, civil, of human civilization uh, for which that can be said less than any other. There's one that fills its pages more with more stuff and is hugely enjoyable to read. I wanted to make sure that I included it on this list, and it's this. It's The Story of Civilization by Will and Ariel Durant in multiple volumes, starting with Our Oriental Heritage and then uh, the, uh, the Ancient Greeks, Caesar and Christ, and, and onward. Uh, they do it in what they consider to be broad, sweeping epochs of time. Uh, and it's terrific. Now, this is not in print anymore, but you see this set all the time at used bookstores and yard sales and attic sales all the time with or without the dust jackets. Uh, and you might have seen them yourself and wondered, I wonder if these are any good or are they, you know, jingoistic and outdated. These are terrific. They're absolutely terrific. They read so companionably well that no matter how well you know the subject, you're still going to want the volume that covers it. Uh, so I cannot recommend them strongly enough. Uh, they show up. At used bookstores, they tend to show up. And I, the next time a, a set or even a single volume does at your bookstore, I would say give it a try, definitely. Uh, but when it comes to uh, world histories, there is one that I recommend more than any other as the best. It is still idiosyncratic. The Durants are less idiosyncratic. They have more ground, a lot more ground, so they can cover a lot more. So they're not leaving as much out. All one-volume world histories have to be idiosyncratic and you have to just bear that in mind. But there is one, I think, that's better than all the others, and it's J.M. Roberts. It's his The Penguin History of the World. Uh, any edition of this will do. Roberts updated it after, for instance, the terrorist attacks of 9-11. Uh, but I think it's been updated once or twice since then as well. Uh, any edition will do. The update will be the very final thing in the book. The main text stays largely the same. And it's tremendously good. Uh, Erudite, heavyweight, sometimes a little slow going, which is not something you can say about the Durants, uh, but well worth your time and, refreshingly, on a list like this, available in your bookstore. <laughs> so so there you go. That is a world history starter kit for you uh, to get you started if you're one of those readers that just wants to read a whole picture before you settle down on one period. There you go. There are some strong recommendations of mine. So I'll wrap this up for now. Uh, but I'll see you soon. Thank you, BookTube.